we are going to discuss about acial antifungals the most abundantly used antifungal agents first we will see how acials exert their effects acials inhibit ergosterol synthesis by inhibiting the last enzyme in the ergosterol synthesis pathway the enzyme is 14 alpha dimethylase if you can see it begins with acetyl-CoA then phenyl pyrophosphate squalene squalene epoxide and lanosterol then lanosterol is converted to ergosterol by the 14 alpha dimethylase enzyme right so acial antifungals exert the effect they they work by inhibiting the 14 alpha dimethylase enzyme right so there is no ergosterol synthesis right ergosterol is the most important esterol in the cytoplasmic membrane of fungi so without ergosterol the there is loss of cell viability so we'll talk about the pharmacology of facials there are two groups of facials right depending on their structure imidacholes and triacholes imidacholes have an imidacholes ring imidacholes ring which has two nitrogen atoms right these are the earliest synthesized acials medications under this group include clotrimazole myconazole and ketoconazole then triacholes triacholes were synthesized by adding a nitrogen a nitrogen atom to the imidacholes ring therefore the triacholes have three nitrogen atoms in their ring medications under this group have broad spectrum of antifungal activity when you compare with uh, imidacholes and the medications include fluconazole itaconazole posaconazole voriconazole and isoconazole so the acials can cause multiple drug interactions because they can block mammalian cytochrome cytochrome p450 enzymes this can cause elevation of serum levels of medications metabolized by cytochrome p450 such as oral contraceptives warfarin digoxin and cyclosporin these drug interactions are very common with itaconazole and voriconazole but there these drug interactions are much less common with fluconazole and posaconazole additionally ketoconazole also can inhibit two enzymes 17 alpha hydroxylase and 1720 lyase which are the enzymes involved in steroid synthesis pathway so when these two enzymes 17 alpha hydroxylase and 7 1720 lyase when when they are inhibited right so they are, it affect the synthesis of gluco, glucocorticoids and testosterone the, this is the reason when you give ketoconazole to young people right when they take the medication for some time they will complain of loss of libido because of the depletion in testosterone level right this anti steroidogenic anti steroidogenic effect is not seen with triazoles triazoles does not inhibit 17 alpha hydroxylase and 17 20 lyase it is seen only with ketoconazole some fungi also some fungi such as uh, for example candida albicans has developed resistant to acials right the mechanism involved in this re resistant development is uh, the altering the structure of 14 alpha dimethylase efflux of the medications and increased synthesis of 14 alpha dimethylase enzyme so we'll talk about the clinical indications of acials first we'll talk about clotrimazole and myconazole clotrimazole and myconazole are available only as topical medications right they are used for dermatophytosis like this commonly known as tinea infections and tinea versicola or pityriasis versicola right that is the very superficial fungal infections Right. It's also used in vaginal, vaginal candidiasis as vaginal ovules, right? And it's also used in oral candidiasis as lozenges. Right. So these clotrimazole and myconazole are available only as topical agents. Ketoconazole. 
Keto control is available topically as skin cream, skin ointment, and also as a shampoo. It's also available as oral tablets. Right? It's mainly used for tinea versicola and dermatophytosis. Then we'll talk about flu control. Flu, flu control is available as oral and IV preparations. The drug has 100% bioavailability after oral administration. And also the 90% of the medication, 90% of flu control is excreted as unchained drug in the urine. So that is why this medication is very useful in treating fungal UTI, urinary tract infections. Right? And for the same reason, the dosage has to be reduced in those with impaired renal function because the medication is excreted unchanged. So when, if there is impaired renal function, the medication level will go up. For that reason, we might have to reduce the dosage in patients with uh, reduced renal function. Also remember that the drug has very good penetration into CSF. So the drug is commonly used, uh, used in uh, CNS fungal infections, uh, especially cryptococcal meningitis. In cryptococcal meningitis, it is used both in therapeutically and also prophylactically. Therapeutically, it is used uh, uh, flu control is used in combination with amphotericin B. In prophylactically, it is used in AIDS patients. AIDS patients, when the CD4 count goes below 100 per microliter, they are more liable to develop cryptococcal meningitis. So these patients, we give flu control daily till the CD4 count comes to normal level, right? Otherwise, they will develop, uh, AIDS patients are more likely to develop uh, cryptococcal meningitis when the CD4 count goes below 100 per microliter. Fluconazole is also useful to treat vulvovaginal candidiasis, candidi candidemia, that is candida in the bloodstream, candidemia, especially in non neutropenic and non immunosuppress patients. Right? Side effects are side effects occur with a chronic usage of uh, 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 fluconazole, and they include headache, anorexia, and Reversible alopecia. We'll talk about titraconazole. It's available as oral and IV preparations. The drug is metabolized in liver and the metabolites are excreted in feces. The, the major metabolite, metabolite is hydroxy It has similar, similar efficacy to the parent drug. That is, it has similar efficacy to the uh, itraconazole. Right? Actually, its serum concentration is twice the concentration of the itraconazole. So, the metabolite concentration is twice the concentration of itraconazole. So, both the drug and its metabolite are meta uh, pharmacologically active. Right? The, the drug has good penetration into tissues. So, the ketocon, uh, the, I'm sorry, itraconazole has good penetration into the tissues. Right? But it has poor penetration into CSF. Poor, poor penetration into urine and poor penetration into eye. So, itraconazole is best avoided in that type of in, in the area, infections in those areas like CSF infections, urine, urinary tract infections and eye infections. But the drug is particularly useful in treating subcutaneous mycosis, right, like such as sporotrichosis, chromoblastomycosis, right, and also it's available, very useful in systemic mycosis. And the drug is also useful in treating serious uh, dermatophyte infection in dermatophytosis, especially in uh, disseminated cases. Right? So side effects are rare and the side effects include nausea, abdominal discomfort and hepatotoxicity. Then we'll talk about voriconazole. It's available as oral and IV preparations. The drug is metabolized in the liver. Voriconazole is the drug of choice for uh, in uh, invasive aspergillosis, right? and this is the this is the the most commonly used prophylactic antifungal agents in patients with neutropenia, especially with absolute neutropenia, where the neutrophil count is below 500 per microliter, because these people can develop infection with. Uh, uh, Fungal, fungi, environmental fungi such as Candida and also mainly Aspergillus. So that is why we use Foriconazole prophylactically when the neutrophil count is very low, absolute neutropenia. The drug is also effective in 
infections against candida species, especially fluconazole resistant species such as candida crucii. Candida crucia is fluconazole resistant. So, uh, the, the, if you remember, we talked that the fluconazole is used in candida infections, but the candida crucia is resistant. Therefore, we have to use voriconazole if the, the infection is by candida crucia. Osoconazole. Osoconazole is available only for oral administration. Right? This is the broadest spectrum of antifungal agents. Right, out of all the Asia, all, all the Asians, this has the broadest spectrum because it covers Candida, it covers Aspergillus infections, it cover, it also covers mucomycosis, that is the infection by Rhizopus and Muco species. Right? The drug is also used prophylactically to avoid disseminated fungal infections. Right? The the major side effects are the headache and gastrointestinal uh, sim symptoms. Then isoconazole is available as oral and IV preparations. It's approved only for invasive aspergillosis and mucomycosis. Taconazole is a topical is a topical triazole. It's available only as vaginal uh, is vaginal suppositories and it's used to treat vaginal candidiasis. Right. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Please uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the like button. And if you have any questions, please post under the comments. Thank you.